In addition to the tool, the box also contains the instruction manual. This should be read and fully understood before the tool is used. Also in the box, there is a cardboard folder. This contains the quick reference guide and a calibration certificate. The serial number on the certificate should be checked against the product label on the tool. The box also contains a USB cable for connecting the Evo Talk 2 to a suitable PC. In the box we also have a case which contains a USB memory stick. On the memory stick we have the EvoLog software, also product manuals for both EvoLog and the EvoTalk 2. The case also contains a Bluetooth dongle for connecting the EvoTalk 2 to a suitable PC. EvoLog software will be covered on further how-to videos. Also in the box, a 5mm Allen key is also provided for removing the secondary handle. If the secondary handle is removed, then infill plates are supplied to fill the gap. We're now going to turn the tool on and run through some of the on-tool settings. When turned on, the tool runs through a startup sequence, which displays the Norbar logo the capacity of the tool and finishes up with the last target that was set. As we can see, this is 270 Newton meters in a torque only mode. Torque only mode means that the tool will just tighten a nut or bolt to the set target. If we wish to adjust this, we can simply use the up or down arrows to adjust. Once set, Press the middle button and we have now reset the tool to 330 Newton meters. If we wish the tool to remember a target, then we need to go into the target menu. The menu is accessed using the top left hand button and then pressing enter to access the target menu. The tool can store up to 20 targets stored manually. If we wish to create a new target, for target number two, we press the middle button and simply scroll up and down to select the torque we wish to apply. For this mode, we're just using torque mode, so we will ignore the angle and we will also leave audit mode with a cross. We have now set a torque of 190 Newton meters. If we wish to set another target, we use the arrow buttons to go down to an empty slot, press the enter button, and again, adjust the torque. Press the center button once we're happy with the torque we've set. This time, we're going to set an angle. Press the centre button to accept the angle and we have set target number three. This is now in torque and angle mode. Torque and angle mode shows that the tool will now do a snug torque of 170 Newton meters and then rotate the bolt through a further 70 degrees. If we wish to set another torque, we go to an empty slot, press enter again Set our torque. This time we will leave the angle at zero and we will accept audit mode by changing the cross to a tick and pressing the center button. This is the maximum angle allowed by the tool before it will fail a joint. Audit mode is used to check pre-tightened joints. The torque value 170 Newton meters would be the torque value that the nut was initially tightened to. The tool will then attempt to tighten that bolt or nut to that torque value. 
If the nut rotates during that tightening process, then the angle will be shown. If the angle is greater than five degrees, then the tool will fail the joint. So we have now set the three operating modes for the tool. We can exit out using the X button, back to the screen, and we can now scroll through the targets we have set. The target shown is for audit mode. It shows the target torque, the maximum angle allowed, and the yellow hexagon shows that it is in audit mode. We can use the arrow buttons to scroll through the other targets we set. Target number three is torque and angle. Target number two is torque. And target number one is torque. Now we are going to look at the tool settings. To enter the settings menu, we press the X at the top left. And then we scroll down using the arrow buttons to the settings target. Press the center button again to enter the, the setup menu. And we can see that the top one is units. We press enter to enter there and use the arrow button to scroll up and down and select the units we would like to use. Press the center button to OK, and that comes back out. We can now scroll down to the next. Auto reset. Auto reset. When set, the tool will reset itself and memorize the last reading after a number of seconds. If we go in, press the tick to OK, it will now ask us for our delay. This is the time at which the tool will reset itself. We can adjust the time, OK to exit. The next one is lock. We can set a four code digit which will lock the tool and prevent anybody else from adjusting any of the tool settings. The next part of the menu will switch Bluetooth on or off. The next one down, time and date. We can use this to set the time and date we would like to appear on our reports. Output format. We can select between EvoLog, which is the software supplied with the EvoTalk 2, or user settings. The user will output in CSV for adapting to the user's management software. Display, this will simply allow us to inverse the display if required. Tolerances, the minimum tolerances for the tool are shown as plus or minus 3% for torque, plus or minus two degrees for angle. These can be adjusted to plus or minus 20 degrees or plus or minus 20%. To exit the setup menu, simply press the X at the top and again, and we're back at our targets. We're now going to use the tool to tighten the bolts. First thing we need to check is that we have the correct socket and that it is attached securely to the tool. We also need to ensure we have the correct torque set and that we have the direction set correctly. This can be changed by pressing the center button. We also need to check that we have the correct reaction and that the reaction point is firm. We now attach the tool to the bolt and at this point, we need to ensure that there is nothing between the reaction and our reaction point. Now all we need to do is simply press the trigger. We need to ensure that we keep the trigger fully pressed through the tightening process. Once the tool stops, we can confirm the joint is OK using the green LEDs and the final torque figure at the rear of the tool. As the green disc is displayed on the rear display screen, the readings we have just taken 
have been stored on the tool itself. These can be downloaded to EvoLog software at a later date and this will be discussed in future videos.